Okay, welcome everyone to the May 10th meeting of the 2021 of the Rochester City Council. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Nixon? Here. Savia? Here. Albrecht? Here. Pavacqua? Here. Harrison? Here. Peterson? Here. Sage? Here. Welcome, Mr. Sage. Hello. Uh, we now are going to go to the Pledge of Allegiance and we're going to be led by Council Member Albrecht. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everybody on a beautiful Monday evening. Hopefully uh, spring has sprung and uh, it's all looking good. First, we're going to move to public comments, scheduled and non-scheduled. And first, we're going to have the presentation of the 2021 community survey. Uh, our city intern, Lauren, is going to give our presentation. Lauren, the floor is yours. Thank you, you so much. Okay. Perfect. We're going to throw the perfect. So um, I'm presenting the 2021 community survey report. Uh, I was able to curate and distribute and write the report with the help and support of the city staff. Um, I am a city management intern, and I'm also a graduate student at Oakland University working towards my master's in public administration. Um, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge what an honor and a privilege it has been to voice the thoughts and opinions of the constituents um, to council today. Uh, as well as I'd like to thank city manager Blaine Wing for the opportunity to work on this project. Thank you. We're glad you could do it. So thank you. Um, so for survey background and methodology, uh, the survey is comprised of 1,239 survey responses of 5,127 mailed surveys. The 2017 community survey um, was used as a framework um, and it's structured with the same 14 separate sections, 10 of which are based on the five point Likert scale. Additionally, there is a section on budget priorities. There was a section on city taglines, city information and um, demographics and all the, uh, the survey also provides statistically significant data with a 3% margin of error um, with 95% confidence rate. And the 1,200 survey responses, uh, as well as representing the 5,127 residences in the city, it uh, represents the, it has the ability to represent um, all 13,000 constituents that the city provides services to. So the demographics, um, these two statistics of the demographics, I thought were very notable. 60% of respondents have lived in the city for over 11 years, and 50% uh, of respondents are younger than 60 years old, which I believe these demographics um, are notable because they express uh, an insight on the fact that respondents have lived in the city for a while. So regarding category highlights, these next two slides um, show very notable areas in the survey. So feeling of safety during the day, quality of life, and image and reputation are the first three. Um, we calculated our positive ratings based on the combination of excellent and good ratings from each of the statistics. And these next three refer to quality of parks, walkability, and appearance of downtown. All of these sections uh, received tremendous support, uh, support from the constituents as well as many other areas in the survey. And these graphs, um, every single graph for every single question uh, is included in the report itself. These next couple slides uh, discuss data comparisons and trends. Um, I think it's a little hard to determine each of the lines from each other. So there is a table version of um, all the comparable data from 2009, 2017, and 2021 in the report itself. 
Um, but I guess to make it a little easier, you'd like to compare the 2017 line, which is the teal one, and the 2021 line, which is the black one. So this one is specific to housing stock, so the development of buildings, variety of housing options, land use planning and zoning, and utility services. This next one is specific to safety. Um, once again, the color coordination, uh, the teal and black line, I think are the most comparable, but this one is specific to safety, volunteer opportunities, uh, feeling safe during the day and at night, police services, fire protection services, and 911 communication services. And this one is uh, specific to data comparisons and public services, so street repair, street cleaning, street lighting, snow removal, and sidewalk maintenance. Um, across all of the graphs, uh, most of the data is very similar within 2017 and 2021. Um, I think the graphs are a great visual, but it might be easier to see it written in an actual chart and table, so that, that is included in the actual report as well as the graph. Um, a new feature that was in the 2021 community survey was created by myself and the finance department. And it's um, regarding future funding possibilities. The constituents had an option, um, they had the ability to choose three approaches um, out of the seven to balance potential budget concerns. And so the three most rated were maintaining city services with a tax increase at 64.1% support enhancing city services with a tax increase of 49.6% support and combining city services with other local governments at 40.9% support. There are additional comments. Um, each section of the survey had an optional additional comment section for constituents to leave any opinions and thoughts that they had. Um, and these five sections uh, were the most consistently commented throughout all of the sections. Um, out of the thousands of additional comments that the city received, these five um, were definitely uh, expressed often. So the overall feeling of safety and security in the city, um, definitely the top comment we received. There is a prioritization of uh, diversity. There is an interest in improved city communications, housing stock mix, and an encouragement of parks and green spaces. Uh, the additional comments will be further uh, analyzed by city department heads. Um, I believe that they're, they'd like further interpretation so that they can tailor the needs um, of their department for the community. Regarding what comes next, um, this survey report has been distributed to the council, committees, boards, commissions, and city staff for review. The survey results have been forwarded to the master plan consultants for inclusion and work plans. And uh, the survey data will be integrated in 2021 and 2022 strategic plan update. And I can take any questions if you guys have any. Councilmember, thank you for that presentation. Uh, Councilmember Albrecht. Sorry, Lauren, I'm not going to ask 30 questions. Um, <clears throat> first off, um, having done this for uh, many companies when we've uh, surveyed our employees, I know what an arduous task this is. So, Lauren, uh, thank you. Uh, it's like boiling the ocean sometimes to try to get, get the responses. So, um, thank you for summarizing it. Uh, my comments are really um, uh, so I, I wanted to thank you, Lauren, for putting this all together. My comments were for um, uh, uh, for the public and, and for our fellow council members and, and city administration. A few weeks ago, Blaine did uh, send us out the link to the raw data. It was 165 pages of data um, that Lauren had to, you know, go through to come up with these 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 fine slides. When I went through that and I'm still going through it. There were six areas 
again, the, the responses have all been very, very positive, as, as, as Lauren said, and we should be very proud of, of, of what uh, the city has done. Uh, but I would have to say the impact of COVID really, um, uh, or the pandemic really impacted uh, a few, th few areas. There were six areas that had double digit declines over 2017. Two of those are uh, directly related to, to the pandemic, or really three of the areas. Uh, availability of childcare was down 31%. We know that's a big issue now that people are starting to go back to, to um, uh, work uh, now that we've hit 55% uh, vaccination in Michigan. Uh, K, K through 12 education uh, was down 24%. Um, I know we've had some challenges with the uh, 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 some things going on with our Rochester Community Schools and senior services were down 15%. The impact of the pandemic on the OPC can't be ignored. Um, the, the, the point I wanted to um, really emphasize, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, this is truly is the voice of our citizens. Uh, as Lauren said, you know, having a 24% participation rate with 60% of the people having lived in the city more than uh, 11 years, we, you know, this is, this is good, raw data. So I went through the 165 pages that um, is in Blaine's report, the raw data, and 53 and a half pages over 10 sections are just co comments. Um, I've gone through probably about 25% of those comments, and I would just urge um, all the, you know, my fellow council members and city administration to read them. There's going to be good ones. There's going to be not so good ones. There's going to be, you know, neutral ones. But when you do, you'll get a feel towards the end of reading all of them of, of, of a, maybe a half a dozen really major themes. And when we have this great data that we've gathered that Lauren synthesized for us coming directly from our, our citizens, um, to me, that's, that's the best kind of feedback we can get. It's, 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 it's aggregated, it's put together for us, excuse me, mm -hmm. and, and they're in front of us. So um, that's what I'm gonna be doing over the next week or so, going through all the comments. And I, you know, when I've done this for my companies, you know, doing employee surveys, I try to come up with what are the major themes people are, people are talking about. Lauren hit a few of them already housing stock, it's hard to live in the city when you're a, a young professional, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I think um, this might be something city manager and Mayor Bixon that we want to do a deeper dive uh, at a following meeting after all of us have had a chance to go through the 165 page report. So again, Lauren, great job. Mm -hmm. uh, Blaine, thanks for, you know, uh, delegating this to Lauren, getting us all this data. Um, so uh, I know what I'll be doing over the next week or so. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Albrecht. Further discussion? Councilmember Bavacqua. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that uh, in looking through some of those uh, comments too, I saw a bit of a theme of concern over, and this is something we've discussed at Planning Commission and also at Council, uh, concerns regarding the traffic and um, the, develop, the development of large multi-family uh, housing units uh, as well as uh, the impact of, of Bigfoot houses on uh, uh, especially the, uh, uh, the older part of Rochester. So I think that's something to uh, sort of a key takeaway from that as well. And we should, uh, we should keep that in our thoughts as we uh, try to help uh, run this city. So thanks. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for putting this together in administration. Um, yeah, this is important data for all of us to review. I've just started going through the comments. You know, the, uh, the, the important nuggets are in the comments and you got to read through all of them. You get, a, I feel like there's a lot of positive and there's a lot of negative. Um, but some of the things that really struck me that I think we really need to take some action on is, um, I heard several times, you know, council isn't listening, administration isn't listening, uh, administration is slower to respond. Those are things that I, I, I think really we need to work on. And, you know, maybe it's something like we need to have some sort of um, you spoke, we listened type campaign through uh, written publication, social media, something. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, pluses and minuses in here that we can all review and see what actions we can take. But certainly, 
the people need to know that we're listening and that we're going to take uh, appropriate actions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Albrecht. Yeah, I want to echo what what Mayor Pro Tem Salvia said. You know, we we put out, and I know uh, Blaine, we already have the next newsletter pretty much ready to go to press. But I think that would be an excellent opportunity to say, here are the six major themes. You know, uh, we we talked that came up. Here's what we're doing about them. Here's some more facts that to, to to back them up, and maybe have that whole newsletter dedicated to, as as Mayor Pro Tem Salvia said, you 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 spoke, we listened. Here's the here's the next steps, and I know um, you know we're we're doing a lot better job of communication with with uh, you know with Natalie and and I think she can do other things besides just the newsletter, uh, but uh, um, for us when you have this great data you don't want to put it on the shelf you want to look at it you want to synthesize it you want to make it actionable and you want to let people know we listened and here's what we're doing about it. Thank you. Further comments from council. No. Okay. Yeah, I'd just like to say also that, yeah, this, this is important information. Uh, the people have spoken on this and it behooves us to pay attention to that. I think that's our job on council. Um, so we take this information and use it wisely. So I think I'll, I'll work with the city manager and we'll come up with some appropriate ways to let people know that we have uh, received this information and take it very seriously. Councilman Robert? Mayor, since I've done this a lot with my company jobs, I'll be glad to help you and, and the city manager and, and, and maybe synthesizing some of this. Uh, I, you know, I hate to keep volunteering for things, but this one is so, so critically important. Um, you know, I, I'll, I, I think we have some extra time now that the tree committee is going. So <laughs> hopefully I can, hopefully uh, I can, I can help you and, and, and the city manager. If you all need right. It. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, again, Lauren, thank you. Uh, for all your work. Thank you for working for the city. You did a great job and um, we will see you soon, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is approval of the minutes. It's consideration of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 26, 2021. I'll move. Motion by Council Member Peterson. Support. Support by Council Member Sage. Discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Nixon. Yes. Savia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Vivacqua? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. I forgot to ask, Brian, is there any public comment tonight? It doesn't look like it. I don't see any here. OK. OK, thank you. Yep. Uh, now approval of the consent agenda. First is a consideration of the special event application from the Woodhouse Day Spa for the New Day Foundation Color of Wellness 5K on Saturday, August 28th in the Municipal Park and Trails. Next is a consideration of a special event application from Real Estate One and Women's Build Habitat to hold a charity bottle and can drive in the Farmer's Market parking lot on Sunday, June 6th, starting at 1 p.m. And finally, C is a review of the current 2001 special event calendar. Council. Approve Motion the consent agenda. Motion by Councilmember Albrecht, support by Councilmember Peterson to approve the consent agenda. Discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon. Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Mubakwa? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. There's no old business or table items tonight or public hearings. And first for le legislative deliberation, first is the approval of the 2021 National Public Works Week proclamation. Council? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Or <laughs> Support by Council Member Sage. Discussion. Are we going to read the 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 uh, resolution, the proclamation? Um. Is that the intent? Yeah, I don't know if that was the intent. I, I guess it wasn't the intent. Um. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do you have that in front of you? 
I, I do. I can either read the whole thing or just the therefore uh, be it resolved portion. That would Why don't be you do that? Thank you. Okay. Um, and again, this is highlighting National Public Work uh, Works Week proclamation from May 16th through May 23rd, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Stuart Bixon, do hereby designate the week of May 16th uh, through 22nd of 2021 is National Public Works Week. I urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association slash Canadian Public Works Association and government agencies in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make in protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Good, thank you. And that's a shout out to our DPW department. Yes. Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon? Yes. Savia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Savakwa? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Next, we have approval of the 2021 Gun Violence Awareness Proclamation. Mr. City Manager, would you mind reading that as well? Sure. Uh, do you want me to go through? Uh, there's a lot of whereases and then the therefore. How about just the therefores? Okay. Um, again, this proclamation is in regards to the National Gun Violence Awareness Day, which is on June 4th, 2021. And uh, the therefore is actually fairly brief on this one. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Rochester declares the first Friday in June, June 4th, 2021, to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Very good. Motion to, motion to approve. Support. Motion by Councilmember Vivacqua, support by Councilmember Sage, discussion, Councilmember Peterson. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, based on this one and the last one uh, that was last uh, at the last meeting, where are we getting this information from that has all these statistics? Uh, Mr. City Manager? Yeah, I believe this was forwarded, uh, uh, Councilmember Harrison, uh, um, and I'm not sure which uh, source, and then we've reviewed it with our um, city attorney with the, the last proclamation. We received it through the American Public Works Association um, with the proclamations from our last meeting. Um, we uh, reviewed that um, with, um, I'm trying to remember, um, um, to remember the actual proclamation from the last last meeting i would have to get back anti-asian hate oh yeah, the asian right. uh yep we actually uh talked with a few other communities i think it was ann arbor and a few other ones that actually um had gathered uh, some of that information and then we cross-referenced it okay so i guess i have a problem with us um doing these when we don't really know the, where the sources are coming from and um i you know and not knowing really what these statistics and things uh what they represent um, because obviously they they're not representative of our own community, you know it's it's as a whole. Um, and so I do think that before we do that, I would like to see uh, these really uh, looked at and uh, given the source so we know what we're actually approving in the future. We good further comments. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon. Yes. Savia. Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Lavacqua? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? No. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Next is approval of the 2021 West Nile virus resolution for reimbursement of the West Nile virus prevention program from Oakland County. Council? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Peterson, support by Councilmember Sage? No, Albrecht. Sorry, Councilmember Albrecht. We sounded like mayor. Thank you. I'll leave it just at that too. <laughs> um, discussion. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Nixon? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Lavacqua? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Next, and this is an important event in our uh, 
City Council year is the fiscal year 2022 budget presentation for discussion and adoption. Mr. City Manager, you can start the process. Great, thank you. Let me share my screen. Thank you, Council. Uh, again, I know we've had several meetings along with our uh, public hearing as we've gone through this process. Uh, again, uh, uh, tonight I'll be providing a high-level overview um, of the proposed 21-22 budget. I want to start off by thanking the city's finance team, as well as the directors and staff, as well as the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, as City Council knows, uh, the city's budget is made up of 16 main funds. Um, I know we're quite familiar with most of these and uh, I'll be highlighting a few of those in the upcoming slides. As this slide states, we've got a lot going on. So in uh, uh, 21, the remainder of 21 through 22, uh, our budget goes through June 30th of 2022. Um, the city, we're updating the city's master plan, which I'll be touching on in a, a couple other slides. We anticipate being done with that during this uh, calendar year. Um, we're working on replacing uh, and improving our South Street water pipes. This has been an ongoing project um, that's been uh, really desired for a number of years. And uh, quite honestly, I was out there with our fire chief and police chief and public work staff and engineers just this afternoon. Um, we're also working on fixing the city's parking system to make it operationally uh, self-sufficient. We're working on the city's upcoming strategic plan. We heard some of the information uh, today from our intern who um, you know, provided the um, latest community survey. So that information will be uh, placed into our upcoming strategic plan. We're also focusing on staffing, which includes uh, succession planning, as well as improving the city's communications with our residents, businesses, and um, uh, various associations. Of course, there's a lot more. I mean, uh, again, uh, it's a little bit thicker than that 165 page uh, document, the budget, but um, there's quite a bit that staff does as well. But I just wanted to hit on some of the highlights. Uh, I won't read all of these, but we've in the last couple of years actually broken um, some of the tasks down uh, by quarter. So this is a, an update here for council um, the next uh, really uh, 90 days and then every 90 days. So each quarter kind of hitting on, on things. Right now, this is a snapshot of where these various projects are. Again, let me just highlight um, if it's in green, that portion's uh, been completed. Um, if it's in yellow, it's yet to be completed. If it's there's red, um, there's something that's gone on hold. Um, and if a project or, or something got canceled, there's a, a, a black X that would go through that particular uh, topic. Uh, as you can see, um, quite full for this uh, upcoming fiscal year, um, ranging everything, as I just noted, succession planning uh, on the HR side of things, facilities, uh, infrastructure, some main highlights, and I'll get into a few more of these in detail here in a moment. So getting into the details. Um, this budget is, and then I put it in quotes, so FY, the fiscal year in 2022 is planned to be balanced or to have a slight surplus. Our total expenditures for fiscal year ending 20, uh, 2022 is a little under $31 million for all of our, our funds combined. As council has the green binders and it's also on the city's website, our full budget, proposed budget. Um, it's listed out on table one within that document. Um, that actually accounts to about 3.4% less than our current fiscal year. Um, as for our general fund, we're just over $15 million. Um, and that's with uh, our current expenditures expecting a, uh, right now a, a surplus around 300,000. Um, I do wanna note the draft that I've sent out to council finance flag to me that that part did not yet have our 184,000 that we've discussed with the requests. However, we'd still have over a uh, little over 100,000 um, if all those requests come through. That's from our city beautiful, the historic district, the staffing components, um, that was the non-union and the staffing company uh, to do a search as well as the community garden. However, um, staff is 
was highlighted to me or noted to me that uh, several of those requests may have some grants, uh, some grant dollars that, that would be coming in. Um, as I noted before, we've got numerous construction projects going on from South Street uh, to Oak and Mahaffey. Um, this budget, proposed budget, has the dedicated 0.94 in the uh, millis. Um, that's the 0.75 that City Council has approved in the past and ongoing, as well as the, the discussion um, in our pre previous meetings of the 0.19. Um, so those together equal the 0.94. There's also some low interest loans that are helping us complete some of the construction projects as well as various water and sewer fees. Uh, again, city staff, uh, along with the new grant committee are continuing to look for, for grants to keep our costs as low as possible. And another thing to just note in the details of this year's budget, um, our tax base has increased by 7.24% uh, and in the budget that's uh, seen on page, uh, or sorry, in table seven. Would be remiss if I didn't highlight uh, the impact of COVID. COVID has uh, in impacted both our staffing and various processes. Uh, just hit on a few uh, uh, items uh, as we're actually in a virtual environment here. So software, including Zoom, um, will continue to allow our committees and depending on um, the legality of it might be extended into some of our other commissions, boards and other things as well. Um, city staff is also um, updated through this process, um, our ventilation system and cleaning processes, some staff tasks and responsibilities, um, and a lot of different transition, uh, transactions were now handled uh, through our website before they were face-to-face. Uh, -face. Overall, city staff is now shifting on the recovery phase, and this is also going to be including some of the, the dollars with the American Rescue Plan, commonly known as the ARP funds, uh, as well as other grants um, and federal dollars that are coming in. Our other highlights, and I'm going to hit on about four, um, master plan. Um, we've had several subcommittees uh, that were formed, and some of those have already met. Uh, staff does anticipate, again, this project being completed uh, by the end of this calendar year, so uh, December of 2021. That will be um, the completion of really the documents, a five-year master plan. Um, and really, we'll have updates to some of the zoning ordinances and the maps, uh, and we'll have, uh, you know, some further discussion regarding the traffic, environmental impact, tax base, housing, and some other topics. Another highlight is our infrastructure and facilities. Uh, as council knows, uh, the city is focused on our water, sewer, and roads, what we commonly refer to as infrastructure. Um, there's also sidewalks, lights, and other things as well. Storm drainage and those facilities um, continue to be a focus as well. I've uh, now been in uh, conversations with several of our homeowners association groups um, or presidents uh, as we've uh, been working uh, more last year and this year on storm drainage. Um, the facilities and infrastructure committees uh, that were created are going to be working on implementation plans. So there's going to be the multi-year plan. So that's going to continue. And again, that was on our roadmap. Um, staff is going to be, along with council, working on refining various uh, uh, priorities uh, and then work on uh, the goals and uh, action steps as well. Um, as infrastructure is expensive, we're working on identifying uh, additional revenue streams to really finance these improvements, repairs, and replacements. And uh, another highlight is really working with our transparency and communication. Um, again, I'll just use South Street as a good example. We were able to do a Zoom meeting with the uh, property owners as well as the businesses, walk through the actual project. We've already dedicated a, a single web page uh, to that specific project. Um, we're updating that and sending out um, email notifications to the uh, businesses and property owners on a weekly basis. Personnel, uh, so some highlights uh, regarding our staffing. Um, we're going to be this upcoming uh, fiscal year working on um, our pay grades and our schedules for uh, our full-time employees, part-time and seasonal. Staff is also, um, will be investigating our, our benefits and we'll be having conversations in regarding to our health insurance and some of our other benefits later on this year um, with again, our open enrollment hitting this fall. And again, as I uh, probably will keep underlining secession planning, especially for our department directors, um, will, be will be a heavy focus this, this upcoming fiscal year. 
Um, one of the challenges here, so going from highlights to a challenge, our parking system. Uh, here's just one of our, um, a photo from one of our parking lots. Um, so clearly we, we have some, some issues as we're going to uh, be addressing. But um, as of right now, our parking system is not uh, operationally self-sufficient. There are some, uh, some deficiencies. However, with the use of the American Rescue Plan funds that could be um, basically brought up to, to par, we can address those deficiencies and get us to a level set. However, going forward, we're going to need to be looking at some, some topics that have already been discussed um, at Council and our Parking Advisory Committee. Um, some of those are possibly changing the rates. Again, I uh, just wanted to note that any of those changes wouldn't be until uh, this upcoming year, um, so of 2022. Um, also possibly looking at some um, other adjustments which are listed here, including possibly adding even a kiosk at the farmer's market. None of these things have been decided, but um, the Parking Advisory Committee will be uh, making recommendations to Council later on this, this calendar year. And uh, I'll take questions and again, thank Council for your guys' time. Uh, again, this was a, a long process with our, our staff and then working through the Budget Committee and then working with Council. Um, I know our finance director, Anthony Maggio, is here as well, and uh, our assistant uh, finance director, Marcy Marwaki, is, is, is here as well. Big, big kudos again to them. They've, they did a lot of the heavy lifting. Again, our new, new software with BSNA has allowed us to do a lot of analytics, but they came up with some good um, Excel tools, I'll say, that allowed us to run through numerous scenarios. I think we're up to 26 um, when we're working on various options. And again, that tool has been shared with council as well so that we can continue to work on this. The, the budgets are really living and breathing documents. They get amended um, and get adjusted. We have quarterly updates and um, you know this is a collaborative process. So again, appreciate everybody's help. With that, happy to answer questions. Thank you, Mr. City Manager, Council. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager Wing for that presentation. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the work that our budgeting committee and our finance department did on bringing us a balanced budget despite the, the difficult year the city and really the world has, has faced. Um, so I feel very fortunate that the state of our city is, is strong and we're making good decisions to move that forward. We know that we have some challenges up ahead. And I think as we continue to meet as a budget committee um, with administration and the finance department, we can address those. But even looking at some of our biggest hurdles, um, as Blaine mentioned, the, the parking structure, the parking fund, we, we have, um, some help with that thanks to the American Rescue Dollars and thanks to um, you know really the the good foresight of our finance department they were making good decisions and I think that that's reflected in our budget so I would like to make a motion to adopt and approve the fiscal year 22 budget there's a motion by council member Harrison to approve the 2022 fiscal year budget Second by Council Member Albrecht. Further discussion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to have some discussion. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, I, I would echo the, uh, the hard work that is done by really all of Council and the Budget Committee um, and administration getting to this point. Uh, we are in the middle of a, a hundred year event um, and so I think uh, this budget reflects a lot of hard work. Um, it also represents our spending plan for the 37 cents out of every dollar that a taxpayer uh, hands over to the city, 37 cents. Um, so how to allocate that dollar uh, appropriately is a lot of hard work. So um, a few things that I see are major accomplishments are the infrastructure plan, the three-year infrastructure plan that city manager highlighted. You know, this is a hundred year event. We are upgrading our major water system as well as doing complete roads on the east side. So, you know, it, uh, to me, it really struck me this weekend reading the feedback from the residents in the uh, survey and then thinking about the budget that um, I really feel like we're working hard on all the right things and the infrastructure plan is, is, is one of them. Um, I also spent a lot of time looking at the revenue sources. 
And I think it's notable that city manager noted that property values are up by 7.24%, but our revenues are not. Property taxes stay low due to Headley. So our revenue is up by just over 1%, 1.9%. So that's great for the residents. Um, even though if you read through survey comments, there's plenty of thoughts on taxes are too high. Those dollars don't flow to the city coffers. So again, our 37 cents that we have to spend and allocate um, is, is really constrained. I feel a bit like uh, the retiree on a fixed budget in the city of Rochester. And so I think we do as good of a job as we can balancing those priorities. But I do think we need to have some discussion around that and we need to look for what other revenue sources do we have. And I heard many times, you know, our grant committee, um, I would love to hear from Council Member Peterson on kind of a timeline and when we can start, you know, I just kind of want to set expectations, you know, can we, when can we apply for grants, what can we do? Um, and then also, I think we need to, over the next year, take a look at uh, what maybe would be called a true zero-based budget. You know, due to COVID, we haven't gotten into the detail on some zero-based budgeting, gone into some of our, our major department expenses, um, as well as we had some discussion in this process around the DDA funding a portion of police and fire, potentially to the tune of 125 to 150 or some dollar amount to um, bring to the table. So again, uh, thank you to the uh, budget committee and the hard work and I uh, do support this. Thank you. Thank you. Further mm, discussion? Mayor. Mayor. Council member Peterson. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a few things. One, um, where I would like to know like where the picture was taken from for the park and advisory fund uh, slide that took place there regarding that. Um, I just, you know, it's interesting because we talk about um, that we need to put together infrastructure plans and things like that, but we're really not getting into the detail of each one of these things that are bypassing. And we did not have a maintenance plan to begin with anyhow until recently on that so um and i do think that we are um depending on american rescue dollars way too soon because we don't exactly know how much we're going to receive um and it's always interesting that every time that we hear that there's going to be extra dollars coming we automatically put them in somewhere and they're talked about but we don't always get that full picture um i still am not happy with the infrastructure um the dollars from the LPC going into the infrastructure because um, we don't really have a set plan of what work we were going to do. In the past, we had a list of the everything and how it was going to play out. And I don't think that we are being as mindful now. Uh, we do a lot of talking about it. I think a lot of this has to come from, as well as we are not meeting as a whole council to discuss um, some of these very important things that take place like infrastructure. Um, I think that all voices should be part of those conversations as well as this budget. I think that you would actually find that um, all of council would understand a little bit better where all that discussion came from or what was said at these meetings. Um, just feeling a little bit like that it's not out there and I'm just supposed to agree with whatever comes forward without really knowing what actually came, went into this here to, to, um, to present it. Uh, finance department, yes, they've been doing a fabulous job at getting everything together and um, leading us into that good direction um, fiscally, um, even though all these hiccups along the way, because I'll call these hiccups, these are, you know, we have a list of significant budget changes that are coming, and I think that those are not really being fully addressed. Um, as far as the grant committee and what we're doing, well, it was stated at uh, two meetings ago what we were able to do and what we're not able to do at the moment. We actually need to have projects. We actually need to have um, these plans laid out so we can go after, have a dollar amount that we need to go after to do these things. I was very clear in letting everybody know that we can't just go out there looking for something if we don't have a plan. Uh, none of them will take it. And then we have to actually have these things stated and ready to go when that money comes in the door. 
So I think that as a council, we need to sit together and talk about what priorities those are that you would like to have done. So we know what direction to go and what um, grants to go after. We already have city administration working with the company that the city has hired to um, uh, filter through those types of grants. And that was actually stated prior to. Um, and once we get that information as well, then we'll be able to meet. But we can't meet to do anything unless we really truly have projects to move forward with. I have, um, I know uh, Dinosaur Hill is working with the DPW the last I knew to get that part together so we could do that as well. So um, I would I would truly uh, like administration and um, the mayor to consider bringing council back so we can actually have full discussion with everyone um, instead of just trying to push things through. So um, unfortunately that 37 cents that's being spent is not always being spent very wisely um, in my in my opinion and what I'm hearing from my constituents in the community. So with that, that's my thoughts, Mayor, thank you. Thank you, further discussion from council. Okay, I would just like to say a few things as well. I would like to also thank the city staff and the finance department for their very hard work. This is a long process, a year long process, so I appreciate all that. I also would like to thank the budget committee for all their hard work. I think the budget committee has done a fantastic job. And everything that goes to the budget committee gets voted on by the full city council. Um, and I'd also like to thank council for all their hard work. This is a very involved city council and I appreciate everybody being involved in the process um, and really offering a lot of different perspectives that are very important um, to our deliberation process. So I would like to say, I would like to tonight as my prerogative as mayor brag about a few things tonight. First, this is another balanced budget. Every single year that I've been on the city council, we've had a balanced budget. I think that's fantastic. And as Mayor Pro Tem Salvia said, we had a balanced budget in a COVID year. So this is very difficult. We, we made a lot of hard decisions. We have a balanced budget. And I think that's something that we can all be very proud of. I believe we offer excellent city services. And that is something that we were proud of. And I believe that's something that this council has made a priority. And if you look at the survey, I think people believe we have very good city services. Another thing that we've done a good job as well as we can is our infrastructure work. We are, we are continually upgrading our aging um, infrastructure. We've done an excellent job and I wanna congratulate the infrastructure committee for really being leaders on this subject. We are looking into future cost, into future things that we have to account for. We have to account for our full-time fire department, which I think is something the city had to have. I'm very proud of the fact that we have that now, but that's something we have to look at. We are looking at that. We are doing all the things we need to do. This council is looking forward and I anticipate and I'm very confident that we will have city budgets that are balanced into the future. So this to me is an excellent budget. I appreciate everybody's help on it. And I think this is a good budget for the city of Rochester. And you said that, Madam Clerk, the roll please. Well, Mayor, I have a comment. Okay. Councilman um, Peterson. I, yes, thank you. Just for transparency, though, we have a balanced budget, though, as well, because we did receive the money from the DDA to help cover parking debt fund. Um, and, you know, that is something that I think everyone needs to know that that's why we have that. Plus, we would receive the American CARES Act dollars, just like the county. County has a balanced budget too, because they received a lot of money to go ahead and make up for the losses that took place in our community. Thank you. And as I'll say again, we have a balanced budget that I'm very proud of. Madam Clerk, the roll please. Dixon. Yes. Savia. Yes. Albrecht. Yes. Pavacqua. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Peterson. No. Sage. Yes. Thank you, and thank you for everybody for their hard work. Next to reports and regular business. First is a purchase of a 2022 Ford F-30 dump truck for the Department of Public Works. Mr. City Manager. 
Actually, I see our assistant public works director, Jeremy, on here. So instead of me talking on everything tonight, Jeremy, if you want to talk, and if not, I'm yes, happy to do it. I will. Up. And I'm sorry I'm going to keep the camera off. I had my whole family turn their Wi Fi and their phones off. I keep freezing up. So I'm going to try to do this without freezing up here. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Yes. So um, we're requesting the purchase of a 2022 Ford F350 dump truck with a plow for a purchase price of $60,756. Uh, this truck is being recommended for replacement as a 2013 F350. This truck has been in service in the Public Works Department since 2013. The vehicle is budgeted for replacement this year. Uh, the life expectancy of this vehicle is five to eight years and it's now in its eighth year. Uh, I will also add that we had two of them up for replacement this year. Um, but because of the way everything is with COVID and the budget, we've pulled that back to just the one that we feel truly needs to be replaced. Uh, we're trying to be fiscally smart with the rest of you. Uh, so we're just requesting to replace only the one this year. Council Member Albert. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the purchase of one new 2022 Ford F-350 dump truck with a total purchase price of 60756 as I mentioned to City Manager Wing, um, I looked at two pages when I got my packet. Uh, they say a picture speaks a thousand words. That picture on slide uh, 45 shows that this uh, truck definitely needs to be replaced. And then when we go to our scoring uh, protocol, uh, this was at the highest priority with 28 points. So uh, I make a motion that we approve this purchase. For Motion by Councilmember Albrecht, support by Councilmember Peterson. Discussion, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. A quick question, Jeremy. Yes, ma'am. I thought I heard you say it went into service. This report says 2011, so that would be 10 years, right? No, 2013, my apologies. No, it's 2013. Oh, okay, so then our scorecard is incorrect. I apologize for that. Okay. Yes, this one went into service 2013. We do have one that went into service in 2011, but it has 10,000 less miles as in, and is also in much better condition than this one. So we chose to replace this one instead as it is in worse condition and the scorecard shows that clearly. Okay, so just, I'm sorry to clarify. So we only have one scorecard in the packet, right? So- Correct, correct. We're only replacing one instead of the two. We decided to only do the one that needs it the most because of COVID and the way the budget is. Okay, and so the one that we're replacing scores 28, or does it score less than 28? No, that would be the one that scores 28. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Councilmember Bavacqua. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess just a, a quick question for City Manager. I know that uh, that that um, work that we've done with um, Enterprise has allowed us to save some money and make some uh, uh, more money on our trade-ins that we've than we've anticipated. Um, were they involved in this discussion at all? Or yes, actually, I did. I'm sorry, Blaine. Not I don't mean to step on it. I don't know if he was aware that I did actually reach out to Enterprise. I apologize. Um, they were actually a thousand dollars more for this vehicle. So okay. the cabin chassis is the only thing that we could purchase from them, and the upfitting has to be done elsewhere. Uh, they were a thousand dollars higher on this. Yes, I did receive a quote. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad we're we're looking around and making sure we're being efficient. Thanks. And if I could also note, uh, we've made almost about twenty five thousand dollars more by actually using Enterprise to actually sell our vehicles um, than through the actual auction. They have a bigger net, and people are competing more for especially our four wheel drive vehicles. And so, uh, again, even if it's three to five thousand dollars per vehicle more, that's actually going back into the vehicle and equipment. So, uh, thus far, um, our year, maybe sixteen month uh, arrangement with Enterprise has been uh, paying dividends. Yeah, it helps us uh, make those balanced budgets. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. um, further discussion, Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Milakwa? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Jeremy, your kids can get back on their video games now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Not that kids do that all the time, but. Right, right. Just, uh, <laughs> 
Um, next, we have mayoral nominations to the boards and commission. I just wanted to say, and, and working with the city clerk, um, I think because of COVID, we have had some people who have not turned in their applications and things. But so I think kind of this year we're going to, you know, maybe tweak that a little bit. So some people who maybe don't have their applications in, we're still going to do some appointments. Um, but hopefully next year we can kind of get back on track with that. So first is the cemetery committee. First, I want to nominate Jack DeFranco, Beth DeFranco, and Stephanie Jazdowski, who does not have her application in, but is going to be getting it in. Um, next, we have City Beautiful. We have Melissa Bavacqua, Suzanne Butala, Laura Murphy, and there was a mistake on this, um, Tammy Byers. She had resigned from her chairmanship. She had not resigned from the um, City Beautiful itself, and she would like to be um, stay on that, and so we're nominating her for that. Got it. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, next is the compensation committee. We do not have any applicants for that. I guess there goes our big raises for the year. Um, for the DDA, I would like to nominate Paul Haig and Bob Bloomingdale. And then for historical, we'd like to nominate June Hopalock, Eric Bothwell, Bob McCulloch, and Kay Johnson. And then for the planning commission, Dennis McGee and Patricia Clark Martin, and for the PSD, Patricia Eisenbrom. So those are the mayoral appointments, and then we have city council appointments for the for board and ethics, community media, historical district, Pink Creek Trailway Commission resident, and ZBA. That's for the city council to nominate. So are, are there any nominations for those? They don't have. Right. I just if anybody had one. Okay. Well, on the, the trailway, uh, Linda Gammers did put in her uh, application right. for renewal. Yep. Okay. So then you would not, then a council person would need to nominate her. I will nominate her. Okay. I'll support it. Okay. And then um, anything further? The historic district commission, I'm not sure. Yeah, didn't we disband that maybe? Yeah, I don't district. think it has a purpose anymore. No. Mr. S Mr. City Manager, didn't we disband that? That was actually that? the Historic District Study Committee. Um, this is okay. actually the Historic District Commission, um, and we've not yet had okay. a full, uh, they've not been able to meet because we've not had enough to, to meet a quorum. Okay. There okay. A purpose, so though? I'm sorry, Mayor. Is there a purpose, though, because we don't have a, we don't really have that historic district that was formed? Uh, there is. I'm happy to work with the clerk to give a, 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 a little paragraph for each one. There are several um, buildings that were included when the previous historic uh, component, and I see the clerk has her hand up as right. well. No, I, I'm yeah, city clerk. Sure. There's four historic districts, and they're individual buildings or houses. Oh, okay, so that's how they did that. Okay. Right. And so. And then so with the mayoral nominations and the city council nominations uh, at the next meeting, we will we'll vote on that. Uh, council Member Albrecht. Yes, Mayor, I was just looking through the packet. Um, there was also a David Gaston renewal on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, did you need a motion for that? Yes. Or? It, yeah. it I'll make that. I, I'll make that. I'm sorry, Leanne. Yeah, not a motion, but just a nomination. nomination. I would nominate David Gaston for renewal for those ZBA. Okay, very good. Thank you. And then Council Member Bavacqua. I'm just I'm just wondering if anybody's heard from Will on the ZBA. Um because uh, he's up again, I guess. Maybe he's one of those that just didn't realize he needed to do it. But yeah, is is Nick on? Yeah, Bill Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, I know he wants to stay on. I, I didn't okay. know that he didn't turn in his thing. So we can uh get him to write us a letter. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yeah, I just I would just have a request for administration. If we could somehow communicate back through the boards and commissions, maybe every March, just to clarify that 
it's kind of renewal time. So yes, you know, you can submit your application. So if we can just make that part of our regular protocol, like you know, Siona for planning commission. Hey guys, this this is the date it's coming up. So that because people don't know. So if we could okay. help make that right. and we do start the process in March by um, sending out a direct email to each person that's expiring. I just didn't get responses. So right. And, and uh, that's a great point, uh, uh, Mayor, yeah. Mayor like Prunt, the Salvia. Yeah. And then also the um, city council people who are on those boards and the liaisons also can help with that process uh, next year, I would think would be a good thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor Pro Town. So we need people for the ethics, for mm -hmm. the media network, historic, and ZBA, correct? Correct. Uh, you don't need, you need alternates for the ZBA, yes. Um, so yes, you're right. And the compensation committee. Correct, was under the mayor appointment. Right, and we've traditionally had trouble getting people for the compensation committee. Correct, because they meet every two years. Right, so we have time. <laughs> this, they, they have to meet the odd years. So they, It's this year is the year that they need okay. to meet. <laughs> Okay. May I have a question. Yes, Mayor uh, Councilmember Peterson. Yes. Um, so I have a um, reviewing that application. I know we've made changes to it in the past to kind of update it and things like that to with the changing times. But uh, I'm going through that again and reviewing it. You know, there is um, not anything on there to state whether or not you have a relationship with anyone at city administration or on council. And I think that is something for transparency, so everyone knows um, in case you are, you know, related to a city administration person, et cetera, or council. Very good, thank you. Okay, on uh, to receive reports for the various boards and commissions, a report from the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Council uh, Assistant City Manager Banda. Yes, thank you. Last Wednesday, we had a zoning board meeting, um, at which time we heard one case. Um, we continue to work with the owners of Forest Ridge. Um, for, you, for those of you that have been around a while, you know Forest Ridge was not a great place um, over the past. And Nathan Levine and his team purchased the property, and they've undergone quite a transformation. The next step in that transportation, transformation was to identify uh, the project to help people, with, especially in COVID, some of the um, delivery services, new tenants, things like that. We're having a really hard time figuring out where to go to to get to their offices, et cetera. It's got a very unique situation between um, First and Second Street and Wilcox that they have three independent parking lots, each with their own entrance. They are not intra-connected parking lots. So I, I can't tell you how many times people would call on the DoorDash people or whatever, like, I can't find this, this place. So they put together a sign package. Um, the, the RM district allows for one identification sign at an entry point of 30 square feet, 15 for each side. Uh, they decided to ask for two smaller signs at the other two main entrances uh, that necessitated a, wave, a waiver from the ZBA for a second and third sign. Again, they were stayed under the allowable 15 square feet, they were smaller signs. And ultimately they will do interior directional signs, but they do not need a waiver that because they are two square feet or less. And they showed the whole package did a great presentation to the ZBA. ZBA approved the request based on the fact they wouldn't be setting precedent because of, you couldn't find another complex in town that had intra, not having interconnected um, driveways or multiple entrance points. So um, that was approved. They're very appreciative. Um, there were, there's two, two white posts at third and, um, I'm sorry, at second and, uh, by the cemetery, they're going to come down. There were evidence of an old sign there at some point, um, and the post were left there. So really cleans up the site. They've done a remarkable job there, um, interior-wise, exterior-wise. Rents have gone up, basically all new tenants over the last three years, and uh, it's been a good partnership with them. So we appreciate it, and ZBA did grant them. That was it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we received a report from the Planning Commission, Council Member Bavacqua. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we had a uh, couple items on the agenda. 
one of which was a, a renovation to 407 South Main Street, which is um, the uh, cards and collectible shop on Main. Um, they are going to be doing a, a facade renovation, and also they're going to be expanding on the second floor uh, to accommodate for residential. And um, they'll uh, be coming back in front of us uh, with the site plan at some point in, in the future. Um, the uh, other issue was uh, Dr. Atala's 134 West University building where uh, recipes resides and other things. Um, he was putting in uh, uh, basement residential apartment units and um, there was a, a, re a revision to the site plan uh, based on some obstructions they ran into when trying to put in the egress windows uh, for these uh, apartments. So they had to be, some of them had to be removed or changed locations. And uh, unfortunately there was a little bit of confusion as to whether they needed uh, to have an egress window in every bedroom or whether it just, they just needed two points of egress for each apartment. Um, we kind of had to uh, put a hold on, on approving that revision because um, we didn't really have clarification from uh, the, the building inspector. Uh, we ended up accommodating Dr. Tala by having a meeting later in the week with a, uh, a letter and a comment from the building inspector that clarified that, uh, that uh, the state uh, code takes precedent and allows for um, there not to be an egress in a bedroom if the, if the uh, facility is sprinkled properly. So, um, you know, within a few days, we ended up getting the approval for, for, uh, for that project so that they could uh, move forward towards getting um, occupancy. And that's about it. Yeah, I, I just, uh, my understanding is they're about to start occupancy immediately. So uh, hopefully that's a good project to uh, bring people to our downtown. Thank you, Councilmember Vacqua. Next, to receive a report from the Sister City Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in advance of getting back together in person, I had to see if I could find a tie and shirt that still fit in a sport jacket for my meeting with the Sister City Committee in Rochester Hills. And I did pass the audition and met with uh, David Blair, Teresa Mangioli, and David Walker uh, on Thursday, April 29th. We met in person at Rochester Hills um, uh, city offices. Uh, we all wore masks during the whole meeting, about an hour and a half to our meeting. Um, we had an agenda ahead of time, and we talked about five areas. One, we, we shared some best practices of the joint COVID response activities that each city had done, how we had managed the, as you said, Mayor, earlier on, the, the, the challenging year of COVID. Uh, we talked about how we are both partnering with this uh, historical museum uh, uh, transcribing all the files into electronic data. We then um, wanted, we discussed a little bit about tri-party agreements like RARA, Paint Creek Trail, OPC. We asked for the next meeting to be able to take a look at those agreements just to make sure um, how they stand and when their renewals are. Uh, Teresa Mangioli brought up uh, redistricting communities. There's a 10 member, I hope I remember this correctly, well, there's a 10 member commission now as uh, the uh, 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 districts are, are gonna be, redi the voting districts are gonna be redistrict and there's a 10 member commission. There's a gentleman by the name of Doug Clark who is a resident of Rochester Hills who did present to Rochester Hills City Council sort of the process that goes into that. Um, so um, uh, I asked for the, his name and, and I will get with the, city manager wing, perhaps, uh, I asked not his name, his contact information, which I have, that perhaps you could give a similar presentation to us uh, on, on how that process works. Because there are, there's a thing in there, and again, that's a, a um, community, uh, community of record or certain thing where Rochester, Rochester Hills and Oakland Township, we have enough synergies between the three of us that we'd want to uh, speak up at some of these uh, open public f sessions that are going to be ongoing as they redistrict the different areas. So again, um, I'm probably not doing it the justice that Teresa Mangioli did at our meeting, 
uh, when I get the minutes, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be able to talk more to it. But I would think having Doug Clark um, speak to us would, might be a, a good thing to happen in a future city council meeting. I'll follow up with city manager Wing. We talked about the Memorial Day parade. We knew that obviously this year, um, you know, neither city was had anything formal. I know we are looking at something at Mount Avon Cemetery on Memorial Day that morning. Uh, but we all felt that the parade that they did pre-COVID that started around Adams High School, and then went up to Veterans Point on Adams Road was very well attended. Um, it was in the morning, the street was, was shut off. There were lots of children and families on either side of the street with the flags and everything else like that. And then there was a ceremony at the Veterans Point, I, I think it's called Veterans Point, um, that day that uh, uh, we'd like to do again in 2022. And finally, we scheduled our next meeting of June 22nd at 6 p.m. And we, we know this the sister city committee has had starts and stops. So we uh, committed to have quarterly meetings so that we can build a relationship. We also asked to find out what is the top to top relationship between, you know, city manager wing and, and mayor Barnett, you know, are we, you know, connected at different areas. So uh, we think there's, there's more opportunity with this committee than probably has been done in the past. Very good. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I just said we never met. So yeah, well, we've met, met twice. We've met in the past. I don't know that that much was accomplished. Uh, next was receive a report from the budget no. and finance committee. Um, I'll take that, Mayor. Councilmember Harrison. If I may. Um, so you may recall last year we entertained joining a consortium for our employee health care needs. And administration was asked to take this you know, past year to compare our current plan with what the potential cost savings would be for this consortium. So uh, finance department and administration presented us with an update and uh, city manager Wang is planning to share that update on how those comparisons played out uh, in the upcoming month. And then we also talked about the poverty exemption update. You may recall that we had some housekeeping on that recently. Well, now the county has evaluated it and come back and they would like uniform language um, throughout all the municipalities within the county. So there are some, some small tweaks that will need to be made, will be presented with a red line document uh, for council to, to consider. It's really more of a housekeeping measure and it does only impact um, and it's not only, but it impacts two of our residents. And we've been told that, you know, Mercy's in communication with those residents and how, if at all, they'll be affected. So okay. I, I think that should cover it unless uh, the other council members would like to jump in. Anything from the other? I know you guys, <laughs> we just had a big bu budget presentation. So I assume that's... Uh your work product, which is a good work product. Yeah, okay, on to the know about all of that. Sorry, Mayor. What was that? I didn't hear that. I'm not familiar with all of that that was being discussed. Thank uh, you. Okay. Yeah, I think we're pretty aware of that. Uh, next is new business for referral and miscellaneous. Uh, public comment, Brian, anything? I'm checking now. I don't see anything, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Next is a receipt of the check register reports. And then city manager update, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, so for the check registers, there's two in there. There's the April 29th and then the May 6th. And then for my manager's updates, so if I can just jump right into that. Um, just want to note again in the packet that's on page 74. First, a very positive thing. Um, we actually received uh, formal recognition um, by Yelp. Um, so um, their, their uh, form is People Love Us on Yelp, and it was an award for our municipal park. So we've been highly uh, rated and uh, reviewed uh, by the Yelp Yelpers, if you will. And uh, so Yelp, the app, has sent us an award for 2021 for our municipal park. 
Next, as was uh, briefly discussed, the Memorial Day uh, service. Um, we are going to have a, a ceremony this upcoming uh, Memorial Day, so um, May 31st at 9 a.m. in our Mount Avon Cemetery. We have uh, a staff committee that has been meeting <clears throat> and will uh, meet this week as well um, that will have some additional details. We'll have a flyer out this week as well as a shareable social media post that we'll make sure to pass out to council so that you guys can push it out through your social media outlets as well as the city will be doing it through our police, fire, and other ones. Um, we're using the Boy Scouts along with our uh, fire and uh, public works staff to place the flags. Um, it'll be a, a back to base if you will, with our, our ceremony. And um, there's been a poem uh, that uh, Mayor Pro Tem has shared. So um, we're lining up uh, individuals from the various uh, branches of the service um, to be represented and uh, as well as for the uh, flag uh, ceremony, as well as the uh, wreath um, um, uh, placing ceremony portion as well. So we'll have after our, our committee, actually everybody's coming back this Thursday to report. So I'll have a little bit more update uh, in, in this Friday's manager's report. But again, uh, today just wanted to share, um, we will not be having the parade, but we will be having a Memorial Day service. So that ceremony will be taking place on May 31st at 9 a.m. in Mount Avon Cemetery. Um, Next, and I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but we are moving forward with our Dillon and Upton, uh, the property that's uh, near uh, Dillon and Upton there with the Paint Creek Trailways. Been in contact with them, uh, included uh, a photo of some of the work that Public Works had already started on Friday. That will continue this week. Uh, uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate. Last week we had three or four rainy days that made it a bit challenging. Um, but three trees uh, will be planted over on that site along with some um, natural uh, plants and grasses uh, as we uh, plan to have that completed by the end of this month. Uh, finally, the Historical Commission. Um, I've been in continuous communication with the various committee members, um, but we are having their first um, Zoom slash phone meeting this uh, upcoming uh, Wednesday. And uh, so I'm sure it's going to be an active meeting, but um, you know, it's a, a topic that uh, is uh, with the, sorry, I'm bubbling, the historical documents that are over at the, City Hall and our storage to go over to the museum for them to be included in the archive is the main topic that's been there. And as I noted, one of our commissioners, Lynn Anderson, actually has been volunteering some of her time seeing how our other um, artifacts and documents um, are being categorized, archived, and put into the database system. And everybody seems to be very uh, happy with the process. And um, I actually talked with uh, Pat McKay. Um, he plans on actually coming to one of our upcoming meetings actually give a, a formal report on the partnership and how that's working. So um, I believe that will be either at our next meeting or the following meeting after that. Um, that's all I have. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk. Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, nothing. There? Thank you this evening. Well, welcome anyway. <laughs> uh, Council Member Albrecht. Um, I just wanted to, you know, people, you as were I'm a year and a half into this uh, this job, and people ask me, you know, how's it going, and how much time does it take? I wanted to comment on one thing that's come up at the last couple of meetings. We have these city council meetings, and you know, they're every other Monday or twice a month, and everything else like that. But this city council, much like most companies, also has a bunch of committees, and most of these committees are made up of three of us. Some of them, one, you know, we're on different boards and commissions and everything else like that. And I think a lot of the heavy lifting gets done in these committees. And I salute that. I think the things that have been done, you know, when we talked about the budget and expense committee and the work that's being done, we all report out, all of us from our respective committees, we all talk about what we've talked about. I, I think there's full transparency in terms of that. And if we feel that there's more information that's needed, I speaking for myself from the different committees I'm on, uh, I'm open to any other council member, citizen, city administration to ask any questions relating to that committee so that we have a, a full transparency. Uh, I think in, in not just a, a, a normal year, but in a COVID year where we couldn't meet in person, 
we still got a lot of work done in those committees that were brought forward here to these these uh, uh, twice a month city council meetings. So I applaud my fellow city council members who are also working hard on different committees. I'm on some committees with some of you. Others are on committees with others. So I think the model works. It works in the public sector. It works in the private sector. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Bavakwa. Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd just like to add to that. You know, I, th I think about uh, some of the work that's been done on uh, like the facilities subcommittee and and the deep dives we've done into, you know, uh, asset management, facility asset management plans and um, the, the, the details of the questions and the conversations and the length of time they take and the feedback we request and get from administration along the way. And th these are just things that can't get done in a, a public forum um, efficiently at, at a, you know, by, by monthly or biweekly, however you want to define it, uh, council meetings. So, um, you know, I, I think that they're immensely important. Uh, I've seen so much more get done um, since we started implementing and executing these uh, subcommittees. They, 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 they're not something that were done before I got on council. Um, and I, I, I do want to thank Blaine, uh, I think, for that, because it's, it's probably something he, he brought from his prior experience to suggest um, that we consider. And, um, and I think it's uh, added a lot of value. Um, so that's, that's just a follow-up thought on that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Sage, anything tonight? Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Uh, back to you, Councilmember Bavacqua. Anything tonight? Oh, I think that was it. Thank you. Councilmember Peterson. I think you're muted. Yep. A couple of things. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, Oakland County State of the uh, State of the County is May 19th at 7 p.m. Virtual. Um, probably everyone received that, but for the public. Um, also, yes, it was nice serving on the infrastructure committee. We've had that that committee for quite some time. Um, and it's been nice that um, at that point. I think um, all the committees now, um, not all of us sit on any of those and there's seven of us interesting. Anyhow, that's it, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. I'm not that, thank you. Uh, Council Member Harrison. Yes, just one thing from me tonight. Uh, the new swing has been installed in the municipal park and I just like, to, to thank the family for, for donating that. Maybe Nick from, has their name handy. Um, it looks beautiful. And if you haven't made it over there, uh, please check it out. It's a nice compliment to the sundial that's there. And I'm sure it'll be beloved for many years to come. Mr. and Mrs. Morris that he owns Controller Technologies over on Letica was very, very thankful for that donation. It's beautiful. So thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Morris. Thank you. Uh, Assistant City Manager Banda, do you have anything for tonight? All set. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, and I would just like to say um, we decided in talking with Mayor Pro Tem Salvin and myself that we thought that we could do a Memorial Day thing in the cemetery safely. And we think, this, you know, so looking forward to that opportunity to, for everybody to kind of get together safely and hopefully really maybe think this is kind of the start of the recovery for our city and a chance for everybody to kind of get together, celebrate our veterans in a safe uh, manner. So looking forward to that on Monday of Memorial Day. Um, now we're looking for a motion to go into closed session with the potential that we will be coming back into open session. So moved. Motion by Council Member Peterson. Support. Support by Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon. Yes. Salvia. Yes. Albrecht. Yes. Vakwa. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Sage. Yes. Thank you. So we'll log out of this and then log into the uh, closed session meeting. So thank you, everybody. Good night.
Yeah, yeah I think the music stopped. Yep. Um, okay, so now we're back in open session, and do we have a motion? Councilmember like Osprey. To, uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, delegate authority uh, from City Council to City Manager Wing to administer a written reprimand to City Clerk uh, O'Connor regarding the uh, incident um, for the burial of, I don't know the exact date, uh, where the city incurred some costs. And then um, we would also like to have um, Lee ask a city clerk to provide uh, city council and Blaine Wing the uh, written response of what happened with the second issue regarding the deputy clerk that has been requested by uh, Blaine Wing to City uh, Clerk O'Connor. Very good. Is there a second? Support. Support by Council Member Sage. Discussion? Uh, City Clerk, if you want to say something, you can. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? <laughs> Madam Clerk, to roll, please. Bixon? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Pavacqua? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? No. Sage? Yes. Very good. So that's all we have for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for um, their work tonight on both the meeting and the closed session. And uh, we will see you at the next meeting. Good night. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.